Welcome to another episode of UEN PD TV. Today we are at Upland Terrace Elementary School in the Granite School District, and we are going to be meeting with Miss Gardner, a fifth grade teacher, and Miss O'Malley, who is an ed tech here at the school, and learn about how they're using Minecraft from Microsoft. Miss Gardner, thank you so much for having us here in your computer lab to see your fifth graders yes. working with Minecraft EDU. Yes. So as I look around, I see just so much building going on and it looks like all kinds of locations and environments. Tell us what's happening on the computers. What are they doing? Well, they're doing a social studies project. We've been learning about the colonial or the colonization of the United, what became the United States and they have colonies. On this part of the room to my right is the Northern Colony group, 12 students. 12 students in the middle are doing the middle colonies and the 12 students on the other side of the room are doing the southern colonies and they're trying their best to replicate what they've been learning about in social studies in Minecraft. So they're like exploring different uh, geographical features, the economy, shipping versus agriculture, and the different types of agriculture. Um, what spawned for you the idea to use Minecraft to teach the colonies of North America? Well, I've got to give credit where credit's due. Years ago when I was um, getting my one-on-one -on -one iPad class and taking the coursework that went with that, uh, there was someone in my class whose name is Amber Palmer, and she was the one who I first heard of using Minecraft with iPads. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, why not? It's got the kids' attention right away, and she says, I'm using it in social studies. And I started thinking about it, and I thought, I could do that too. And I have no idea from there what she really did with it in social studies, but I came back to my classroom and started my kids on iPads with Minecraft, creating colonies. So every student has a Microsoft account basically through Office 365 and that allows them to access Microsoft EDU. It did, how much did it cost for you guys to set this up? At our school nothing. I have no idea what it cost at the district level but it was connected with their Microsoft 365. So the kids you said are referencing books that they've read for social studies as they're building in Minecraft. Which books are you using? And these books they read for language arts as well as social studies. I, I'm pulling in everything I can from every one of our curricular areas. Uh, so um, Pedro's Journal was the first one that we read and it's about a boy who came across, it is historical fiction, but it, he came across with Columbus's ship. So we started there and the kids, once they got into their colonies, had to first create their ship that they came to their colony on. So then we uh, looked at videos. We've gone on to online Kids Discover. Uh, we've done research. We have read other books like The Witch of Blackbird Pond, which is where they get a lot of their information. We then moved on to If You Lived in Colonial Times. And the one we're going to next week is if you live during the American Revolution. Because our colonies are almost to the point where they're ready to be taxed. Mm -hmm. I haven't told the kids about this yet, but they're going to get taxed. Have you guys heard about taxes yet? Yes. But oh. not in their colony. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of response have you gotten from parents when they hear that their kids are going to school and playing video games? Well, I don't tell them that that's what they're doing. <laughs> I tell them that, that we are creating colonies right. using Minecraft. So this is beyond playing video games. This yes. is, what is it that you're replacing in the curriculum or in your classroom? Are you replacing a paper activity with Minecraft or anything like well, that? Maybe displacing would be a better word. I'm not replacing. This really is transformative because they can't do this in mm -hmm. the classroom at all. That, uh, yes, I could get Legos out and maybe they could build something, but they couldn't move through it and work at it in the same interactive way they are with each other. Well, speaking of the future, what are the skills that these kids are going to need in the workplace in the future? All of these skills, they need to know how to work with each other. Here's a girl over here who's helping another student who had a problem and she found out because they just chatted about it. Okay. Uh, on their 
computers, their iPads, their Chromebooks, and in the future, uh, phones. Mm -hmm. They'll get a text from somebody who has a problem, and they'll give them the answer quickly. That's all the kind of skill that they need for the future. They've got to be able to work with other people because we're programming computers to do things. The kids are programming computers to build the houses already. So along with collaboration and communication, you're also touching on some design. Um, creative types creative. of things. We're getting all those four C's in there. Mm -hmm. So And some computational thinking as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because as we saw, these two guys were using code to create things in the game that they were right. limited by. So what's the big limit here? Like, what is it that limits the kids? Anything? Well, there's some things you can't do. Uh, for instance, we couldn't grow cotton. Right. And one thing that they're limited to the number of kids we have in the classroom, even though the more buildings you build, you get villager, villagers that just sort of spawn mm -hmm. and show up. So populations do increase. Okay. Um, I put certain limits on them based on conversations that we had in the very beginning. We created rules. For instance, our number one rule was that there will be no sabotaging of other people's projects. There, so there isn't right. a whole lot of competition in here like you'd expect to hear about a video game. Like I've heard that Fortnite is like violent and there's a lot of competition. There isn't any of that in Minecraft EDU? Well, we're not using that version of it. We are in the creative, peaceful gotcha. aspect. And that's all stuff that the teacher has control over. Okay. When things are being set up in the beginning, they can decide, are you going to allow the kids to be in survival, which is a lot different. These guys come with uh, a pack of tools and supplies that they don't, didn't have to go harvest all of their mm -hmm. trees. But you could set this up so that they do. Okay. So you've got all kinds of ways of assessing the students in Minecraft EDU, but how do you assess what they think? Like, what do they think about the video game platform? Well, there's two things I do. The first, at the end of each year, I ask them if I should let my students next year mm -hmm. do this or if I should cut it out. And they tell me. And then the other thing I do is I just ask them, why is there, don't you do it? Let's check with the kids and see what they say. Yes. In the, it, helps yeah. us, it helps us vision what, what it was like back then. Yeah. yeah. And it's a fun way of learning instead of just working on a work, uh, like yeah. a paper worksheet. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just like watching a video and then it's having like a 3D, to like. It's like a 3D. It's a new environment for us, like a 3D world. Yeah. Probably just like a. I really like rocket science, so maybe a, something like that. Um, I've always wanted to be a vet. I love animals. Uh, I want to uh, be an investor. I want to be an engineer. I want to be on Broadway. <laughs> and do you think that you'll use skills from Minecraft in any of those jobs? Yes. Yeah, yeah, with probably, coding, yeah. that allows you to yeah. problem solve. Like if something doesn't work, you can go back through your code and see what went wrong. A good way to convince like the teacher that we could do projects on Minecraft and still have it be worth the amount of grade points. Uh, would, so we have like a journal on our Google account that we put like things in after every day of Minecraft, and that saves in our uh, overdrive. So we could just uh, send it to her, like show it to her, kind of be like, it's a good like environment for you to like kind of learn and be more creative with things instead of just a pencil a Google paper. slides. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that because like um, if you do send her like what you've had in your Google slide, then it would be like it would be a lot better because just Minecraft is way funner than doing a Google slide or a Prezi because you can actually like build the environment and you can write stuff um, like with the blocks. So that'd be cool if you could uh, you could do it in Minecraft. Say you learn something in class and you can express and show what you know about that. Like, for example, we have read books about the old times.
times, and that has helped us build stuff in Minecraft. So it may give details about one part, and then you can show that you know that's a thing in that. Say, like, the house, like, you know if it can have windows, like Isaac said, or, like, the base, um, and would it be better, like Ali said. And you can show what you have learned um, through reading books and what your teachers have taught you. Uh, yeah, you don't, it's not only for social studies, like, you could build a structure and then you could make it fun instead of just like a worksheet that you have to fill out. So, or a Google Slides. Like you could make a castle and then to get to like the main cool area, then you'd have to answer like some math problems. So now we're gonna to talk to Casey O'Malley, who is the EdTech. What's your exact role? Yeah, I'm a school technology specialist for Granite School District. And um, half of my time is working with teachers, coaching, and helping them uh, integrate technology into the classroom and across their curriculum. And the other half of my time is spent working on break fix, fix issues. Mm -hmm. So fixing Chromebooks or when Wi-Fi or email is down, helping the teachers solve those problems. So they can get back to work. Okay, so help me understand this. As an EdTech, I've seen like so many like promotional events and tutorials and trainings on how to use Minecraft EDU. And then I like never see it actually happening. What did you do to make it come into fruition here? Yeah, I think, I don't think that I did a lot other than um, like really collaborating with teachers and getting them excited and kind of being a support for them when they were a little bit nervous about taking the risk of starting Minecraft in their classroom. Um, but I think I would attribute the success that we've had with Minecraft here just to our teachers, um, their willingness to engage in new technology to inspire and engage their students. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think my role is just supporting them in whatever uh, path they want to take in infusing technology in their classroom. Well, that must take a lot of courage because I have seen that like when using Minecraft EDU, you have to set up like a server, you have to have all kinds of things on the hard drive, and there's a lot of back-end setup. How did you go about doing that? Um, I was pretty lucky because we have our network engineers that did a lot more of the like uh, complex setting up of the server and everything. Really what I did was um, show the teachers how to log on, how to get their students in with their Office 365 account. Um, I showed them a couple of example lessons that were already built and then we really just spent a lot of, I spent a lot of time making sure, um, you know, the computers were provisioned, had their newest operating systems on there. Um, and other than that, that's, that's really the extent of the tech side that I had to do. So when I look around and I see a bunch of kids on computers working in Minecraft, like part of your mindset is, oh, hey, these kids are playing video games all day. What kind of feedback or responses have you gotten from parents? About yeah, that? I've gotten some great uh, feedback from parents, parents that are excited that students are building and uh, working through a design process. Um, and I've also gotten some you know, emails and questions and concerns about what the students are working on, which is natural because I think um, the Minecraft that we see at home might be different than the Minecraft EDU version. Um, and so I just think it's really important for teachers and coaches to make sure that they, they have those justifications for why we're, why we're using it in school um, and you know, how we're tying it to the core. All right, so Casey, you took a growth mindset approach to this, uh, struggled through setting it all up, made your mistakes. What would you tell a classroom teacher who's just getting started with Minecraft? Um, how to get how to get up and running? Yeah, I think I tell them to jump right in. Um, I was definitely intimidated when I started. Um, I had never played Minecraft before, and many of the other teachers that I've worked with have never used it. Um, and I think the best way to get it started is to just jump in. Um, so I, before I had introduced Minecraft to any students or teachers, I probably logged in about three or four times just to get comfortable with some of the settings or the controls, learn how to log in um, efficiently. Uh, and then when it came to getting students on to Minecraft, we probably the setup would probably be about two or three 45-minute lessons focused on team building, collaboration, expectations and procedures. Um, and during that time, 
uh, the teacher and I co-taught a lot, so I would run more of the technical side of it, while the t so the teacher was learning at the same time. Um, and then after about three of those introduction lessons and tutorials, then I would get students right into a, a lesson that was really focused on a content, on a standard. So you were telling us about these large projects that one took five months to build, and now you're mentioning these like 45 minute lessons. Is there a place where a teacher can go to get the lessons they need to get started? Yeah, if teachers go to education.minecraft.net, uh, they can log in with their Office 365 account, create a teacher account on uh, Microsoft, or Minecraft EDU, and they there's tons of resources there. So there's pre-made lessons. They can search um, by standard, by grade level, by content. Um, there's lots of different ideas from other educator, educators across the country, and um, yeah, they can download some mini lessons there. Well, we've seen some really amazing things going on in your computer lab with your students, what they're learning, how they're using Minecraft. Thank you so much for having our team down to interview you and for sharing all of your information. Awesome. We totally enjoyed it. Class, did you enjoy having them here? Thank you for watching this episode, and a big thank you to Ms. Gardner's class for letting us join them for some of their social studies lesson to learn about how they're using Minecraft EDU. And if you want to learn more, check out the Microsoft website at education.minecraft.net. If you want to register for one of our UENPD classes, go to uen.org development, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch more of our great episodes of UEN PDTV.